So today we are talking digital marketing front lines. And I just want to be really honest with you. I think you all know about me that I am an honest person that try to keep it as real as it comes. Um, so there's a lot of information in this. So I may talk very quickly. And I think that it's totally okay. Thank you, Ava. I see you. I appreciate you using the Q&A to talk to me. I, I am okay with that. It might drive Colleen nuts, but I'm okay with it. So good to see you too. I can't see totally you. Totally fine if that's what works for folks. All right. Sounds good. So digital front lines, and you know, when we first created this session and really defined it, it was going to be a deep dive on all the platforms. And what you probably already know about me is that I have, I won't let you make too many assumptions. Like we have got to get specific in some places about how you apply this over time. Because what we know about social media specifically is that it changes every day, like every day, every hour, every month, every holiday, every pandemic, every everything. All it needs is for the wind to blow and it's going to change. So I need to make sure that you are prepared for things that are applicable beyond just that one thing. So you will see, like last time, that there is a lot of general information, and I will deep dive a bit later, um, and I'll try not to frustrate you. Okay, deal, deal. So let's talk about the agenda here. Just in case you missed the first one, I will talk about who I am again, and it'll take me all of 15 seconds. Second, I want to talk about the assumptions, right? These are the things that I have to assume you know in order to have a handle on this. I will never present anything to you in any space at any time where I just assume you know and I don't tell you what assumptions I have. That's not fair to you. Then we're gonna talk about strategy, but we're gonna talk about overall marketing strategy. Then there is social strategy. Then the messaging across those different platforms. And then we probably need to be a bit technical for you to understand the platforms themselves exactly, right? Real quick, let's see how many of you are willing to talk to me today in the Q&A, because I don't know if we have chat yet. In the Q&A, tell me if you are with me today. Just go ahead and load that up real quick while we get started. The only thing I changed about this slide is that instead of putting target addict, I decided to change the target aficionado. I feel like that's a little bit more me because I feel like I just understand it as opposed to being addicted. The addiction is my business. So this is the marketing version of target addict. That's the only thing I changed. Other than that, CEO is where I work every day and I love it. Elevation Academy is where I get to teach people all the time and I love that. I do love my son. I do love my husband and I absolutely love Target. If you want to read this, bless you. Totally qualified, I promise. All right, let's see. Q&A has 10 things. Let me pause for the calls. Let's see what we got going on here. Okay, Jasmine is with me. Ooh, Irena, Irena. Okay, if I mess that up real bad, just let me know, all right? Gabby's with me, Rashawn's with me, Carla is with me, Kara is with me. All right, Charlene is with me, Anonymous Attendee is with me. I love that. Hey, Anonymous Attendee, I love you out there. Glad you're here. Um, Nicole is here, Jermaine is here, Drea is here, Kaylin is here. I love it. Happy Tuesday, John Tavia, I'm glad you're here. Trey, Okay, I got it. Look at me. I'm on top of it. All right. Trivia for us is in the building. All right, let's do this, okay? Here are my assumptions, right? These are the things that I have to assume before we get started, that you harbor some basic understanding, right, of these platforms. I cannot make the assumption, like as detailed as I plan to be, I cannot assume that you know, you don't know how to set up a Facebook page. Like I need you to, that part I'm going to assume you know. But also I have to make the disclaimer that there are no dumb questions. So if I refer to something that you are not familiar with, I have to make sure in saying I make that assumption that you know I am always open to answering any questions that you have. So don't hear me say that when I say I expect you to have a basic understanding. The second thing here is that all that marketing one-on-one -on -one type thinking, like your brand voice, your brand tone, all of that, I have to assume that you define that marketing foundation. And we talked a bit about that last time, but I have to assume that you've done that. So when you hear this, when you see this, when you go back to it, remember there are steps before we arrive here. And then also I have to assume that you have a bigger picture marketing strategy, but like last time, maybe this is a good place for us to begin. Now, first things first, <laughs> um, if you finish that in your head, just tell me in the chat and I'll know if we're real friends. All right. So first things first is you need to have a business plan or strategy. 
your business planner strategy will beget a marketing planner strategy. That's really important for you to understand. Marketing strategies do not stand alone. They are always tied to your business plan goals and all of that. If this is your first time here, you know I say this a lot. I do not want you to create marketing things that are not directly tied to the plans you have for your business or organization. We're not just making stuff up out here, right? Second about your marketing strategy is that this plan does support that other plan, but it is your North Star of marketing, right? Like your marketing essentially has to go, oh, look, Colleen got the chat open. Oh, it's about to go down. All right, if you can emoji, give me some hand claps for Colleen because I love a good chat space. So let's go ahead and, and give her that love. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes. yes. All right, it's working. We, we love that, Colleen. Thank you. Uh, do my thank best. You. Woo -woo. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Look guys. Listen, when you're virtual, you got to find all the ways to celebrate people. See, they love that, Colleen. You just don't know. You change the energy of everything. Just I then. feel the love. I do. Yes. Thank you. And while we're here, Colleen is amazing. I just always have to say that in case y'all think Aww, I'm Aw, Jackie. Mm -hmm. Feeling so is mutual. Thanks. She is so great. All right. So your marketing strategy provides that long-term vision for like overall marketing efforts. You're looking ahead and doing that work to define your target market, your buyer personas, your competitors, your value for customers. All of that bigger picture marketing strategy is really, really important. And while it can be tedious, that stuff holds through to your social strategy, which we'll talk about. Last, a little bit of pro insight. This is a living document. So you're constantly going to check the strategy. I don't want you to believe that you get to set it and forget it. So as, as tedious as it is, you want to make it as in-depth as possible and decide what levers you want to pull in the future. When you're trying to reach your goals, you don't want to just go in there and just start to press different buttons. If you move too many at once, you don't know what was working, what doesn't. And so it's a living document, but we want to be strategic even in our approach to changing and making, making adjustments. All right. So if you have not developed a marketing strategy, because again, I can't leave you too far alone. Um, the, here are a few things that I want you to consider about that. This is this is what it looks like. And it's real boring. So it's okay. Just you're not a marketer by trade. It's super boring, right? But you need to conduct some market research, define your goals, identify your target audience, create those buyer personas. Who are these people? What are their lives like? Conduct some competitive analysis. And this gets to be very technical, right? This is what I probably almost failed in college a few times is what's going on around us, right? What are the pricing things? What are the trends? All that kind of fun stuff. Develop key messaging choose your marketing channels, which will include social, but there may there should be other things, right? In-person, traditional, billboards, whatever. And then you need to present your marketing strategy. But Jackie, what if I'm the only person who's really working in my business? Present it to yourself. Make a slide deck because if you are truly working toward what it is you want to accomplish, you will not be the only person for long. And I want you to act in that way. So when someone says, what is your marketing strategy? I don't want you to have to put it together then. You've discussed it with yourself, with your executive C-suite, which might be me, myself, and I. And then you got with your board, which is you know you and yourself and you. And so all of y'all are on the same page. So when someone else enters the chat, you should be ready to go, all right? Now, let's talk social strategy. Now, if I am flying too fast for you, you better let me know, because I got a lot. I know what's on the other side of these slides. It's a lot. All right. So social strategy. Here's the point. Your social media strategy is your master plan. Social is easy to get sucked into without a plan. Let's all be honest. How many of you are on social with no plan whatsoever? The process here is, yes, it's more planning. It's more mapping. It's more ahead. And there's more that you have to do, right? Like, the process defining that it requires all of this time that is not executing it. Hey, Let's, Jackie. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. Before you move on, there was a question from sure. uh, 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 Jesse Parker. Is there a preferred amount of personas you mm. should use when conducting market research? That is a good question. Um, there's not a particular amount. I think that you want to be careful not to be so hyper specific about the buyer personas that they're not realistic. So you may have multiple, but if you're getting to more than maybe five or so, especially for a smaller business, you're probably doing too much. 
But we want to be able to cover who we think we're always going to see, who we ideally want to see. Those two people may not be the same person. You know, are there different aspects of a buyer persona that changes the outcome of what we're setting up? That kind of thing. So if you get more than five, I would say that's too much for the sizes that we are right now. Um, but it can vary, right, depending on the business, depending on what you're doing. So there's not really a set answer without looking at it in detail. Thank you for taking a pause for that. Of course. Now, the promise I have to you about social strategy, guys, is that with a strategy in place, you have a higher chance of being effective. And as much as we all truly enjoy being present, I want you to be effective. Pretty is not even as important as effective. So that's a big deal. All right. So social strategy, right? Ah, I got you, Caitlin. I see you there. Um, so social strategy. Now, let me back up here a second because I want to tell you this. When you get these slides where it says HubSpot right here, this is a clickable post. And this information is broken down in way greater detail than I have time for today. And so I did link this in advance so that you can go and read it and deep dive and take all the time that you want you to do that. I was reminded because there's here one, one here as well for a Hootsuite blog post. In case you don't know, just insider tip, all of these platforms that want your money, they do a wonderful job of educating you so that they can overwhelm you enough to spend your money with them. Just a little, just a little tidbit. So let's talk about your social strategy loosely. The first thing we need to do is choose goals that align with your business objectives. We cannot skip over that, right? Again, business goals, marketing, social. But all of that starts with your business goals and objectives. Second, you need to learn everything you can about your audience. Who are we talking to? This is something that happens in the foundation of building that business plan and that marketing strategy, but you got to know who you're talking to in order to be effective. Then we're going to get to know our competition and we're going to specifically talk social here. I want you looking around, head on a swivel, right? I don't want you to ever think to yourself, well, I don't pay attention to, I hear people say this all the time. I don't need to look around. I'm trying to do my own thing. Guess who knows? your audience knows. They know who's around. They know the other places that they can spend their money and you should too. So I want you to get to know your competition in those spaces. What is your industry doing on social, on Instagram, on LinkedIn? If you're going to show up in the same places, you need to know what else is there. Then I want you to do a social media audit. Look at what you have learned about your competition, about your audience, and really look at what you are operating like. This might be what kinds of posts are we doing? How full is our profile? All of the things that you feel like you can tweak and adjust to be better, right? Then if you don't have accounts in the spaces you've decided you need to be in, then we want to pull over and improve, set them up or improve the profiles that we currently have, right? So we just want to make sure that these things that we've, we've learned up until here are actually being applied in the most basic form the way the account is set up, the features that we're using, that our profiles are full. All right. <laughs> Rashawn, I know that all too well. Says, I just had a social content client cancel because she says she can just do it on AI. Ooh, the soapbox is loading, but I will not touch that right now. But just know I feel you. <laughs> so also next, we want to find some inspiration. This is creative work. I know that it's business for us, but marketing is a creative industry. And we have to remind people that I was talking to my VP yesterday about that. I was like, I think people forget that this is a creative industry. So I do need you to pause and find some inspiration and really, really choose where you want to go with that. Right. The next thing here is we want to create a social media calendar. But I also want to remind you that with that calendar, we want you to make sure you are detailing and outlining how you want to execute it. Having a plan is just one part of it. And I got a whole other set of slides for creating that plan and executing it. Today is not that day. But having the plan is just one side. You have also to have to have a plan about how you're going to execute it. You have all these great ideas about content. Who's going to record it? Who's going to post it? Who's going to engage afterwards? All that kind of stuff is really, really important. All right. All right. Um, there was a question that came through, though. Alicia said, do you have a suggestion for getting out of the creative ruts? Uh, yeah, well, I'll tell you what my maintenance strategy is really quickly. It is do not create when you need to create when you want to. 
So this another place where planning and strategy really comes in really well is that if you have a plan and you can get ahead, then it's not pressing. Usually the things that are holding you back on being creative are because there are so many requirements of you at that time. I need to make a sale. I need people to like it. I need people to do it right now. And so your brain is saying effective while your heart is saying creative. So you want to create when you don't necessarily need it. That's really, really important. <laughs> Kaylin, you were hilarious. Can't we say you're not going to forget about us. Yes, I will. I pay, I pay money. So your name is on the check. Don't, don't play with me. And <laughs> Jackie, Tanya had a question about she's getting advice. I think she may be targeting an older population and she's mm -hmm. being told that she shouldn't use social media because oh, they're totally on target Facebook. audience, right? They're on Facebook. Trust me. They're, they're there. And if you are a person who has any older family that does the weirdest stuff on Facebook, you know what I'm saying is true. Older people love Facebook. And I I'm I consider myself older, but we're talking like my mom loves Facebook. Her high school class loves Facebook. Um, when my grandmother was living, she wanted us to set her up a Facebook account. Like older people are absolutely there. Now, you might not depend on it, but you should have some strategy around it. And we're actually going to get into demographics. So we'll talk about that in a second. All right, jumping back in with Canva knowing its place. Here we go. <laughs> so next we're gonna talk about messaging across lines, right? So you have this strategy. Here's where we are. You have this strategy for marketing, business, marketing, and then we're in social. So we have an idea of what we wanna do. And you're like, I know, my, I know what my message is. I know who I'm talking to, all of that. But how do I do this in different places? I, want, I first wanna start with do not what I call blind copy. And that means you post it on Instagram, you just automatically share it everywhere else. It's the same caption, same picture, same everything. Do not do that if you can help. If you have the time to not do that, please do not do that. And we're gonna talk about why. So messaging across lines. The point here is that your brand message has to maintain consistency, yes, but adapting is key on these platforms. And the question that I have to ask you in that process is, do you understand the language of that platform? Every platform shows up differently. But I can promise you that if you take the time to adapt your message and your content, that can be a game changer for you, right? Absolutely. Now, first question, right, is do you know your brand's overall messaging? So before we talk about adapting this into different spaces, please don't miss this question. Do you know overall what the messaging is? So before we do messaging across lines, just real quick on messaging, I need you to know yourself first, right? Understand who you want to be as a brand. Your brand is a person. I always say that you want your brand and your audience to be best friends. Like that is my homie. We talk all the time. We are so cool. I know them. They know me. And they know me like, know me, know me. They don't expect me to be perfect. They know what my downfalls are and how I get frustrated. That's how well we want to know our audience. So know yourself know how you want to show up in that space with your friends, right? But also know your audience, know what resonates with them, understand how they speak and how they take information in. Do they prefer to learn and go apply it themselves? Do they like when you show them the behind the scenes where you're like setting up the balloon arch or whatever it is that you're doing? Do they care about that? So we want to understand the audience as well. But this is really important to me, this last one that a lot of people don't consider. Know where you want to be. And this is big on your messaging. In the overarching part of your marketing strategy, you have what's called brand position. This is where you've decided where you want to fall in the industry. So if you made a map, right, or a chart of priority or level of everybody in your industry, the largest brands to the smallest, I just have an idea brand. Where do you want to fall? Even more, what conversations do you want to be in? Even further, where in that conversation do you want to be? And what I mean by that is, do you want to be there just being friends with everybody or do you want to be seen as a resource? So yes, I know that one degree marketing is not as large as whoever handles stuff for Netflix, right? They have their internal marketing department or Nike's marketing department. But should we find ourselves in the same conversation, I still want people to see us as a, as a resource because our experts are just as knowledgeable as their experts in my mind. The experience may be different, right? The industries may be different, but I wanna position myself as a resource. What do I need to do to do that, right? All right. Now, before I go too far in messaging, this is probably a good place for the technical piece, 
Um, so we're going to jump there. Now, I'm not going to tell you any stories. This is going to get really weird before it gets cool. OK, so hang on. There's some nerding out that's going to happen. I know. I know. Just stick with me. I promise. OK, just it's OK. I get it. You don't want to. I know you don't. You don't have to tell me. So the technical part of this, I always use this phrase that says having a tool does not teach you to use it. And what I mean by that in a life way, and this is, you know, Jackie's life tips, right? What I mean by that in a kind of life way is that if I give two people a hammer, somebody's going to put a hole in a wall and somebody else is going to hang a picture. Because having the tool itself does not necessarily teach you how to use it effectively. So the technical piece of this, while it is very nerdy and you may think it does not matter, you cannot maximize your efforts in social media or any space for that matter if you don't know what you have at your disposal. You need to know what tools you have and how to use them. The process, right? Take time to understand whatever platforms that you have committed to. And I promise you, it will take your efforts a lot further in that space if you're using that tool the way that you really can, right? Y'all are quiet in the chat. I don't like that. Say something to me. Because this is about to be a lot of words. So I need you to, I need to know you're there. While I wait for you to show up in the chat, here we go. Now, I want to apologize in advance as I, you're taking notes. Okay, got it. Hey, that's fair. That's fair. Just remember on these slides, don't take notes. Let me tell you why. Because I'm going to, you're going to get the slides. Don't try to write this down. Don't be taking pictures unless you want it immediately. But I just, this a lot. Do not put this many words on your slides. This is clear. This is for the purpose of you having it later. I promise you I would never do this if we were in another setting. So here we go. I'm going to focus on three things. Instagram, Facebook, which is meta. They get on my nerves. That's what that's for. Um, and then there's LinkedIn. That's Those are the only three I'm going to have time to run through, right? It's 1127 in my time zone. Trust me, that's all I have time for. But if you have questions about any other platforms, please know that I am here for you. So let's talk about the tool. You have reels, you have posts on your timeline, you have stories, you have highlights, you have live, you have guides, you have fundraising, you have broadcast channels, you have shop, you have messenger. One platform, one. So on this platform, you can post static things, you can post photos, you can post videos, you can post long form videos, you can po post short stories that disappear. You can go live and talk to people. You can ask people for money. You can give them blog post style things. You can do more podcast style stuff on Broadway. You can do all of that in one channel. Make begs the question, why are you in more than one channel? But you can do all of this in one channel. Now, I love Instagram. That's where I spend most of my social media time when I'm not working, which is not that often. But when I am, that's where I am. But these are all the things. And you know, if you hold on five seconds, it might be longer. Who knows with Instagram, especially. Demographics, a few things I wanna point out, but one I bolded here that's most important. Instagram audience, Instagram's audience is 52% male. I feel like somebody didn't know that because I didn't. And 47.8% female. That's kind of wild to me. I have some theories about where it is, why that is, and I, I won't talk about them today because they can get, get to be a little a little different. But that's a really good thing for you to know because I think we assume most of the people on Instagram are women. They are not. It's not. It's mostly men, not by a long shot, but that's the case. But this is one I want you to pay a lot of attention to. Eighty-seven percent of Instagram users say that they take action after seeing a product on Instagram. If you fall in that eighty-seven percent. Please identify yourself in the chat so I know I'm a family because I know I Instagram gives me every time. I just see Kayla, thank you. Because it is, it's me. There, I'm it's me, the 87%, right? That's very normal. But now you understand why these kinds of things matter. If you are selling products, a high vacations and restaurants, a high percentage of people are making decisions based on that. Oh, not balling on the budget so you can't. I feel that. I really do. I really do on a spiritual level. All right. So here, oh, that's so great. It's like I saw the Be Good grant application on a reel. Boom. See, taking action. The power of social media, right? All right. Next technical thing we have here is Facebook. You have reels. You have posts to your timeline. You have stories. You have live where you can get stars. You have messenger. You have pages. You have groups, events, shop. Now, I want to keep in mind here that I'm showing you how people can engage with you. But there are also these ways, pause, 
This is a good time to remind you of why graphic design is important. Because if you're looking at all these words and you're like, I know she didn't put all these words on here. That's why you should do stuff like this. I left that like that just so that I can remind people it's always good to show you, right? So this will help your brain as a human a whole lot better. But these are all the ways that you can interact with people up front. They can interact with you. But Meta also has quite a few behind the scenes thing to help you out. Business manager, ad marketing, content planners, all that stuff that you probably pay from a third party. You can do that right in Meta, which, you know, kudos to them for doing that. They took a lot of money out of that market, but kudos to them for seeing a need for the people that they want to stay on their platform, right? Now, here is the thing that I pointed out here. Users spend an average of 19.7 hours a month on Facebook. So you are competing for about 20 hours a month from these people. You have 20 hours to sell them every month on what it is that you want to do what you have, why they should buy from you and all of that. 20 hours to fight the good fight. This part is extremely important. How many of you have Facebook business pages? Just real quick. Let's, let's, let me find out here who all has a Facebook business page. Okay. I'm assuming most of you do. Jasmine does. I see you over there in the Q&A. Um, okay. So a lot of you do. Let me free you right now real quick. Okay. The average engagement rate for a Facebook page post is 0.07%. If you needed to hear that, let me know. Because I need you to know it's not just you, right? It's not just me. 0.07. It's not even 1%, right? That is the average rate of engagement. So when you say to yourself, because y'all know I, I have to give you realistic things. When you say to yourself, oh, what I'm doing is not working, listen to me. Technically, it's not working for anybody, right? You know what I'm saying? That's what this says. But if you're getting 0.07%, you are really living the life out here. Goodness forbid you get like a whole one. You teach this. And I'm going to sit on the other side because how, right? But I need you to see that for the purpose of perspective. Right. I need you to know that that does not mean your efforts are not going unwarranted. There are other things that being present help you do. Showing up in SEO, when people do come and they do look and they do research, they can scroll and see that you are active and all of that kind of stuff. So I do want you to know that it's okay. Don't stress out about that. And what's crazy is that 0.07% is achieved by the average Facebook page posting almost two times a day. And all we're getting is 0.07%. Now, some of this has a lot to do with the fact that Facebook is very pay to play. They want you to run ads. They want you to boost it. I know you know. I know you've seen it. You know, hey, this is great content. Now give us some money, right? It's all good. They're, they're in business, right? So also, people are 53% more likely to buy from a business that they can message. So being present there is also helpful too for a customer service type thing. So there are ways to use it. I just need to kind of help you with the mentality of, oh, it's not working. It probably is working. And then here are all your demographics. So each of these, as I've gone through, give you demographics, right? Demos here, ages. So when you're doing your strategy, I want you to make sure that who you said you were after is actually covered here in a decent percentage. If they are not, you are in the wrong place. It's really that simple, right? LinkedIn. All right, here we go. LinkedIn says timeline pages, showcase pages. Now, I actually learned about showcase pages through Microsoft because, you know, Microsoft has Office and Excel and all of that. So they have the Microsoft page, but they have a showcase page that falls under Microsoft for all of their platforms. So that way, if you're ever thinking to yourself, I don't want to mix messages. Some things are just for some people, that kind of thing. So for me, it's like one degree. And then you have Elevation Academy. One degree is a page, but there's a showcase page for Elevation Academy because I need you to know that they're related, but I don't necessarily want to mix all the content into the one degree page, right? That's, that's what that's about. Then you have articles, newsletters. You can invite people to events. You can go live. I don't love LinkedIn Live. I haven't really gotten into it, but that's my personal preference, not my professional preference. Um, messenger polls to get reactions. Really, really, really helpful things to use. Right. So, of course, they're using it well if they own it. Right, Rashawn? Um, 
So then, and I actually, before the question went away, before I saw the rest of it, hold up, let me go back. Here we go. It says, it is evolving from its initial intent, but still professional in my point of view uh, compared to the other socials. So just tips in general, you're saying, or is there something specific that you want to know, Jennifer? So the, while I wait for her to answer that, um, here's the thing I wanted you to know here about LinkedIn. LinkedIn users have twice the buying power of the average online audience. I just want you to sit with that the way I sat with it. Cause I was like, hold up. What you are telling me is that these people, and they say it in the Democrat, this is why being nerdy about this matters. That perspective tells you everything you need to know, right? It tells you, and, and even they have higher percentages on other things. 80% of LinkedIn users drive business decisions. 53% of US LinkedIn users are high income earners. So while we may think that it is not intuitive to sell on LinkedIn, that's where the money is. So if we are truly chasing the bag, then we might find ourselves walking past LinkedIn once or twice, right? So all of that to say, when you engage, you want to keep in mind that we are talking to not where the money resides. I love y'all. This is one of my favorite, favorite things <laughs> to do. Um, Jontavia says, so in a nutshell, LinkedIn is as powerful as a reel on IG. For that audience, yes. For that audience, which is what we're kind of simultaneously talking about. Our messaging showing up in this space, but you got to understand who these people are when you are in those spaces, right? We are talking about people who are largely 25 to 34, much younger than maybe you would have thought. And this was in January. So 25 to 34 is pretty young. So likely they're coming out of college. Maybe they're working on advanced degrees. They probably have a decent paying job, which means they probably go on vacations. They probably like a luxury lifestyle. So if you are selling anything service wise, yes, but also anything that is lifestyle to people who you feel like are looking for higher income options. I, I don't know, where's the screen on this app, y'all? Down there, wherever it is, here, here are the details that say they might be where you need to be. But on LinkedIn, of course, like everywhere else, you do want to speak a certain language. It's about the mentality that they're in, right? All right. Jackie, before yes. you move on just quickly, mm -hmm. um, Nicole asked if LinkedIn got rid of the audio and Boyd had a, a broader question about how do you, he's using LinkedIn. How do you know if they're using it properly? Uh, well, properly is a strong yeah. word. Um, <laughs> because again, unfortunately, I have to kind of know how you're using it in the first place, but I will I will say this, LinkedIn, let me give you an example. LinkedIn kind of has become a space where people engage in a very celebratory advancement mindset. And what I mean by that is that everything is an announcement. I don't know if you've noticed. And my, my favorite example is, I saw a meme once that said, on Instagram, there's a photo of a driver's license and it's like, oh, I got my license, I'm about to be outside. On LinkedIn, it said, I am excited to share that I have received certification to operate a motor vehicle in the state of Alabama. Same post, I got a driver's license, right? But on Instagram, on LinkedIn, annoyingly, everything is an announcement. Everything is an advancement. Everything is about forward motion and career progress, right? That is the mindset that people are typically engaging in. Oh, you spoke at a conference. Oh my God, that's so great. Oh, you're a thought leader. Oh my God, that's so great. You got a driver's license. It's a driver's license, right? And so it's really important that we understand the mindset people are in. So how you're using it properly per se, I would say, is it that your content gives people a space to celebrate a thing, to feel like they're a part of an advancement, to feel like they're gaining some type of knowledge that moves them forward? That's what they're really after in that space. Now, can you still just talk directly to them? Yes. Can you still call out pain points? Absolutely. That's really important for you to know you can still do, but we still want to mix into that mindset that they are in. They don't want to just tell you the thing. They want you to celebrate it. They want to have a reason to celebrate. They want to talk about that forward motion and that forward progress. So that's kind of properly is about whether you've adapted the message well enough for them to engage and see value in it. That feels like a really political answer, but that's really the best I can do. <laughs> so without really knowing specifically, right? Um, 
Any other, I feel like there was another question I didn't quite address. Colleen, what was the second question you said? Um, Nicole asked about LinkedIn audio and we also have Miranda raising their hand, which I am trying to give that person permission to talk, yeah. to come off mute. Um, so LinkedIn audio, I have not seen as an option recently. And this is why I say I had to be really general on these screen, these slides, because I promise you it changes day to day. Um, LinkedIn has done a few things where they've put it out there and they've pulled it back. They had stories for a while and they pulled it back. And so I think that they've been trying out some of these options. Like they had live, I actually don't see as many people go live. Um, not anymore. For a minute, I did all the time and then I stopped seeing it. So I feel like because they are, which is smart and how what we should all do as business owners, if you try something and you see that it's not adapted very quickly, like you think about um, Reels once it was competing with TikTok, that kind of thing, right? It's like, okay, cool. That's what you all want. If it wasn't quickly picked up and there are first users like, oh my God, I can do this because I did TikTok and all of it makes sense. And they jump right in, likely they're not going to. And so as a social platform where things are moving very quickly, if you see something pop up and then it kind of goes away or you don't see access to it really quickly, eh, don't put too much stock into it. Now, I think being an early adapter is very, is cool if you have the space and time to figure that out and how it works for you. But if you have not really done great on the things that you are doing that are just your core social space showing up, do not be pressed to try every single element. So as far as I know, it is not still there, but they could just be limiting who has access to it, that kind of thing. So I'm honestly not sure. Thank Miranda. you. Yeah. And uh, Miranda, I think I gave you permission to unmute if you if you can come off mute. Um, if not, we'll we can get back to your question. Oh, she co oh, oh, covered she it. covered it. Okay, great. All right, I'm gonna do something. Another thing I don't recommend, but again, you know, different circumstances call for different. I'm gonna read to you because this is important. People always like to blame things on the algorithm, so I'm going to tell you what. And I have Instagram and Facebook highlighted here because they're meta together. So when I say Instagram, I kind of need you to hear Facebook as well because they're kind of they're governed by the same thing. This is what they say about their algorithms. And I think it's going to be helpful. Instagram doesn't have a singular algorithm that oversees what people do and don't see on the app right out the gate. We use a variety of algorithms, classifiers, and processes, each with its own purpose. We want to make the most of people's time and we believe that using technology to personalize everyone's experience is the best way to do that. Each part of the app, feed, stories, explore, reels, search, and more uses its own algorithm tailored to how people use it. People tend to look for their closest friends and stories, use explore to discover new content and creators to be entertained in reels. We rank things differently in those different parts of the app and have added features and controls like close friends, favorites, and following so you can further customize your experience. How does hearing that make you feel? Because if you've ever said to yourself, oh, the algorithm is doing this to me, there is not one algorithm out there in the sky. This is good perspective for <laughs> they lying. That's, I'm sorry, that took me out. <laughs> They, I, I believe it 100%. And also when you get the slides, this is clickable. So if you want to read further about that, you'll be able to do that. But it makes sense because it is true. There are some people on this call right now who really only go to Instagram for reels. There are other people that really only go to, you know, Facebook for the feed to talk, to see their family, right? That's a real thing. But that is the power of people being hyper-specific about knowing their audience. But I want you not to think that there is one algorithm to beat. There is not one to beat. There are many to understand. But this is the time to remind you that if you can stay organic in your approach, then you don't have to worry about that because you're going to fall in what people want to see because you have chosen the right things to say, you've called out the right pain points and you know you're talking to the right people. The algorithm should support you, right? It should support you. Further, feed ranking. To rank what you see in your Instagram, your feed, IG uses your activity, reels you've liked, saved, reshared, commented, et cetera. Information about the post signals both about how popular a post is, information that the person who posted and your history of interacting with someone, right? 
All of that is included in whether they show people your content. Now, I'll, I don't know if you already know this, but you can't control that. You cannot control it. This is number one reason why websites are important, where you can control people's experience. But second, I need you not to be focused on these algorithms. I need you to be focused on your audience because I don't know if you've noticed, but that's who they're focused on too. So if you will just keep your, your eyes focused on the people that you are trying to serve, how you talk to them, what kind of images they like, what kind of videos they like, your content should be about your buyer persona. It should be about your target audience. It should be about them. Don't worry about the platform. It will support you if you are focused on, if you're in front of the right people, it will make sure they see it. The question you need to ask is, am I focused on the right people? All right. LinkedIn. LinkedIn's algorithm measures a range of factors to guess how relevant any given post might be to your audience. Yes, they said yes. <laughs> if you laugh and say yes, ha, huh? I get it. It will sort your content into one of three categories. Check this out. Spam, low quality or high quality. Spam, you might get flagged as being a spam if you use bad grammar or include multiple links in your posts. So avoid posting too frequently, more than every three hours. So while someone asked, I think in the last session, how often should I post on social? Do not always believe the more I post, the more traction I get. That's just not true. As you can see, you actually kind of get flagged for that because are you a bot or are you a real brand? So more than every three hours makes people look at you with the side eye, right? Don't tag too many people, not more than five. Hashtags like hashtag common, hashtag light, hashtag, and this is pretty much the case on all social, can flag the system as you being spam. I know that that's what all the influencer girlies do, but it's not for you, we're business, okay? Low quality, this is what they call low quality. These posts are not spam but they aren't following best practices for content either. If you can't make your post engaging, the algorithm considers it low quality. And again, we're over here in LinkedIn land where they're like, hey, if they're not trying to applaud you over here, we think that maybe this is not high quality, which kind of makes sense because typically it's funny because LinkedIn is very ego driven, which we're talking about with the driver's license, but it's ego driven for your audience. They like being, tell, tell me, and when I say this, it's going to make sense because then I'm telling me if you feel me, right? People like that. They like to comment on the stuff so that other people can see that they, they were in the know. Like, you ever notice that? You know, you go on LinkedIn and you see all the people commenting because they want to be seen as connected, right? Very ego driven. So, and keep that, again, marketing is psychology. It is psychology to a T, to a T. So you want to think about that too. Give them a reason to want to connect. Like that's a strategy in itself. What kind of content is going to trigger them? Be like, oh my God, that is so true because I, it is always about us on LinkedIn. It is so ego driven, right? And so that's, if you can't get them to do that, they consider it low quality. And I get that, right? High quality. These posts that follow all LinkedIn content recommendations, the post is easy to read, encourages responses with a question, uses three or fewer hashtags. Three, incorporate strong keywords. Only tags people who are likely to actually respond. That means no spamming Oprah because she's not coming to talk to your stuff. Okay, just want you to know that in case you were wondering, she's not going to do it. All right, now let's talk about adapting our messages. And now I have to go quickly. We have about 10 minutes. So I'm going to pause. Do me a favor, put our questions in the actual Q&A so if we do get a chance to come back to questions, I can get them. But let me speed through this really quickly because I want to show you an example. So messaging across the line. So we got all this technical stuff. Right now we know who we are, what conversation we want to be in, what position we want to be in that conversation. And then we also know what platforms we want to be on, how people, like what's going on in that platform, what tools we have, all of that. Three things to remember when you talk about messaging across those platform lines. The psychology, different platform, different mentality. You could be talking to the same person on all three of those platforms. The question you have to answer is where is their mind, right? Where is their mind if they're on LinkedIn? They're like, I am on LinkedIn, right? 
you go over to Instagram and they got the spaghetti strap showing right and all of that. So it's not about, oh, I'm talking to the same people. You might be talking to the same people, but they're in a different mindset. That's what you want to understand. Different platform, different mentality. Then you want to remember the platform. Different platform, different prioritized method of engagement. Instagram loves some reels. They love video content. So Instagram itself has preferences. So you have the psychology of the people that you're dealing with, the, the people. Then you have the platform. So we want to make sure that all things are clicking together. Then you have the product, the things you're actually selling. Different platform, different aspect to be highlighted and a different pain point to call out. How, how vulnerable and transparent people are, sometimes it's different varying levels on different platforms. I'm not going to get on LinkedIn and tell you how I can't stand when my seven-year-old tries to tell me what to do. Little boy, I brought you in this world. I will take you out. But I will get on LinkedIn and say, I'm so excited for my son's advancement in, in uh, second grade and all of that. But I will not tell you that he almost tried me, right? So the level of transparency, the pain points that I have about a thing might be different, but I need you to understand maybe my guard is more down on Instagram and I'm a little more buttoned up on LinkedIn because I don't need the people who work with me to know that I might have to trip up a seven-year-old. They don't need to know that, right? Okay. So here's my example. And whether you want to believe it or not, I made this up myself and I'm laughing because my VP is actually in the room. She's like right there. Um, we, She looked at me, she goes, this is going far. And I was like, I know it's bad. So here's my example, right? Here's my message. New product is coming soon. I need a call to action. I need to list out my pain points, benefits, details of the product. So when I'm thinking about crafting a message, this is kind of the things I need to make sure I have ready to go. If I'm going to be talking social specifically. So here's my made up, press release style message. Birmingham-based designer brand Jackie's Couture, that's me, designer brand, launches summer 2024 swimwear line featuring luxury fabrics and beading from African Maasai tribes. The swimwear line will feature all-inclusive sizing with designs being cut to fit different body types to ensure everyone can bring luxury to their vacation experience. Visit jackiescouture24.com to sign up to be the first notified when the line becomes available this November. I made that up. So don't go to that website because I don't know what's there. And if it's something like bad, I don't just disclaimer. I don't know what's there. I didn't check it. This is my message, right? So this is how we're going to start. Everybody with me? You with me? Okay. With me? Looking, looking at the chat. Yes. Oh, Colleen's with me. Okay. All right. Because, you know, it gets too quiet around here. So here's my Facebook post. And yes, I made all this up just, just for y'all. Here's my, my caption. Exciting news. We're on Facebook, right? Exciting news. Birmingham's very own Jackie's Couture is thrilled to announce the launch of our summer 2024 swimwear line. Emoji. Drive into luxury with our exquisite designs featuring the richness of African Maasai tribe fabrics and intricate beadwork. But that's not all. We're proud to offer all-inclusive sizing, ensuring every body type can bask in the lap of luxury on their vacations. Be the first to know when these stunning pieces drop this November. Visit JackiesCouture24.com to sign up and be among the first to flaunt the latest swimwear trends. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. Tell me y'all don't want this swimwear line. And I will tell you, you are lying because this sounds exciting. Now in Facebook, right? I could use stories and do a series of these blurred photos with a link to a call to action. So take you to the website so you can sign up. I could go live and do a series with the designers themselves and talk about the inspiration behind the designs. We're on Facebook now. Messenger, I'm going to set my autoresponder with that call to action. No matter what you're asking me, the first thing I'm going to say is, hey, someone will be right. Right. See, she's got, who is this saying? Niambi? Niambi. I don't want to mess that up said she's coming to, to Birmingham for the opening because this sounds exciting, um, which is why I went too far, by the way. So on my messenger, when people message my brand page, they're gonna get an autoresponder that says, hey, somebody's gonna be with you, but in the meantime, go sign up for this because it's coming, right? Event, I'm gonna make a launch day event because of course you want everybody to know that you're gonna be there at least virtually, right? Even if you can't make it to Birmingham, then we're gonna shop. Once everything is live, it's going to be ready to go. Buy it. Come get it. Give me your money. Okay. All right. Instagram. Same, same message. The wait is almost over. Birmingham's own Jackie's Couture is thrilled to unveil our summer 2024 swim line. Dive into the allure 
of African Maasai tribe fabrics and exquisite beadwork as you embrace the essence of luxury. With all-inclusive sizing, we making sure everyone can enjoy the sophistication of Jackie's Couture on their getaway. Be the first to make a splash in these breathtaking designs. Sign up at Jackie'sCouture24.com to be in the know for our November launch. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. Isn't this fun? Right. Stories. I may do something similar live. Instead of going live with the designers on like I am on Facebook, I'm going to go live with the models and let them talk about how everything felt. Right. And I'm going to make sure I have a plus size model because I want her specifically to talk about, you know, how it was cut in the different models and how maybe things aren't always made for her body. Like I want to give them personal experience on Instagram because I know that people are making buying decisions on Instagram. Right. Making buying decisions. Guides. Now, I don't know if you all know what guides are on Instagram. You probably have never used it, but they're like mini blog posts. So I can create a guide about styling your swim and vacation wear and do a whole series leading up to it. So I can go ahead and convince you that you don't have everything you need anyway, because you don't have my stuff. Right. And then once everything is live, we're going to shop. Okay. And I see y'all's questions. Once I finish this example, I'm going to come back to them. All right, LinkedIn, here we go. Same thing. Now, notice I changed my picture. I don't know if y'all picked up on that. Changed my picture. It's a little luxe. You know, it's a little different. Birmingham's very own fashion sensation, because I'm sensational, because it's ego-driven over here. Jackie's Couture is excited to announce the launch of our summer 2024 swimwear line. We're bringing the elegance of African Maasai tribe fabrics and intricate beadwork to the world of swimwear, setting a new standard for luxury and style. Our commitment, you hear the wording change here? Our commitment to inclusivity shines through in all our all-inclusive sizing, ensuring that every individual can experience the sophistication of Jackie's couture, regardless of body type, because we don't want that to hold you back. Stay ahead of the fashion curve by signing, because you need to stay ahead, because again, we're very ego-driven. Stay ahead of the fashion curve by signing up at JackiesCouture24.com and be the first to make a splash in our stunning swimmer collection this November. Join us embracing luxury with purpose. Same swimwear line. Different audience, different platform. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. Okay. Posts. I'm going to use these posts to focus on lifestyle and call out work breaks vacations, because it may be weird to you to be scrolling past, oh, I got a new job and see a swimsuit. And I know that. So let me just stay focused on where I know your mind really is, which is not being at work, right? But I also will want to focus on the ethical side, because over here, you want people to see that you also care about inclusivity, because DE&I, hello, why are you not giving me the clap of hands emoji? Because you care. My content's going to give you a space to care. Polls, I want to ask you about your lifestyle questions and what makes you choose your swimwear. Now, you got to be careful with this because if they start giving you answers that don't align with what you're about to come out with, that could be problematic. So maybe we steer clear of would you choose my stuff, right? Articles and newsletters. I get to be my own PR on LinkedIn. I can tell my story the way that I want to tell my story instead of waiting for other media to pick it up. And if they want to pick it up, then you can pick this up. I've already created it. I've already framed it the way I want to frame it. And if I should have to send you information, I can refer you to this. All right. Now I'm going to be quiet. All right. I did. Thank you, Drea. You noticed there are no emojis here. <laughs> Not one. Okay. I did take them out. And apparently and Jasmine is not a fan of emojis either. Yeah, I saw that, <laughs> like in general, <laughs> right? Um, but I do want to say this. It's okay to use emojis on LinkedIn, but I wouldn't put waves. And because I oftentimes will use more, let's call it like office supplies of emojis, right? I'll use a little pen. I'll use a location thing. I'll use that kind of stuff. And there's nothing wrong with being yourself there. But I just want you to be careful again of the mindset that people are in. Also, we want them to share it. Now, one of the unique things about LinkedIn that I you know, didn't necessarily get a chance to mention is that when people engage with your posts, it shows up on their timeline, right? It's the only place that happens. You like a LinkedIn post, and when you go to that person's LinkedIn, it shows up that they liked it. So if they engage it in any way, we don't want them not to engage it because they don't want it to show up in their space too. So you want to make sure that you're keeping that in mind, that you're about to show up when people go to look at them. 
That is something to remember. And again, very ego driven in that way. So we want to just minimize the chances that they skip past us because they don't want people to know that they're associating with whatever is in that caption or in that picture. All right. So I'm going to be quiet for a second and read through what your questions are. And I'm going to ask Colleen to tell us, here's this. I'll come back to it if you're still here, um, but it's also clickable on the slides. And you, let Colleen take it from here. Yeah, awesome, awesome presentation. Thank you so much. Um, I know we're short on time, so I want to. So Jasmine, again, I think we we talked about the emojis, right? About how to make it authentic, when to use it, when not to use it. Um, Ava's asking, do you recommend any particular content planner or calendar? Are there components of good planners that we should look for? When it comes to the planner itself, um, so Facebook, I mentioned, has a native planner. I don't know if you all have ever seen it, but when you go to facebook.com, and I'm going to pull it up real quick and share my screen just so you can see what I mean. If you are the kind of person who can plan digitally, bless you. I'm not like that. I need. I like to write my stuff down on a board or something so I can see it, move it around. We in my company use CoSchedule. Um, you can put notes in there and kind of say what it is that you you have going on. Um, and then you can decide, you know, what ideas you have on the side. And then you can put the actual posts in there and schedule them. So there are planners per se that you can use that don't schedule. And you have schedulers that come with planners. I would say the key here is, is to start without a tool and decide how you plan best. And then when you go through looking at schedulers, tools, whatever, you know what you need because planning is something that's very personal, right? There's no, I have great tips on planning for me, but mine don't even work for all of my team, right? We all have to get in our own zones and kind of decide what it is we want to do. And I try to make sure that our platforms align with that, but some people are just using notepads out here and that's okay if that works for you. I too have printed a blank calendar off Microsoft and just written in it, right? So I want you to first think about how you process your planning and what tools you could use digitally to keep you organized and then choose a planner. That's really the best answer that I can give you. Rashawn's a fan of uh, the Facebook IG planner too, oh, yeah. it looks like. Um, Nikita's asking um, with a message about your hashtags. Are you saying we should not use a lot of hashtags on a post? Yeah, don't go hashtag crazy um, because one, you look kind of spammy, but also even with hashtags and this is, this is, there's a such thing as a hashtag strategy. It's crazy. It's like business strategy, marketing strategy, social strategy, within social strategy, you got LinkedIn strategy, you got an Instagram strategy, and you might even have a hashtag strategy or a story strategy. Everything could be a strategy, right? But in your hashtag thought process, let me not say strategy, thought process, um, I want you to consider what is on the other side of that hashtag? So I'm not saying you should not use a lot of them, but typically a lot of them aren't relevant. So if I put hashtag marketing, when I go on Instagram and, and go to search and put in marketing, hashtag marketing, my content that won't fit well in that. Yeah, and there are a yeah. billion people using it. So there's no way for me to niche down. There's no way for me to explain to the algorithm what I'm really after. So post to post, you might have, and I like to have a cloud of hashtags, right? If you're posting something, I'll use myself as an example. If it's specific to small businesses, I have a cloud of hashtags just for small business stuff. If it's specific to an event, I have a cloud of hashtags for events because I need to make sure they match up with what I'm saying in this post and that they are unique to what it is I'm after, what I think people will be searching. So you can use a few, but the more you use, the more fake you look like to the algorithms to the the computers right because that's what it would do likely um and then you also start to lose a little bit of the relevancy we're not after quantity here we're after quality so make sure that they make sense and make sure that they are relevant to what you're talking about great point we have one last question from uh charlene i hope i'm saying your name correctly should videos be used on linkedin absolutely videos should be used everywhere that's it. That's the post. That's <laughs> like they should be everywhere you can use it. And really, really, really quickly, I'm going to just show you this screen real quick. This is Facebook Planner. This is for the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute. So just don't tell them I was showing their stuff. But that was the one where I knew there was going to be a little bit of stuff on there. Now, it will only let you schedule out two weeks. But as you can see, it will give you like days that are coming up, Indigenous People Day, Halloween, like it'll tell you the stuff that you used to have to Google, which is great, but you can plan Facebook and Instagram here. 
So all of this is possible right in here. And even when you go into plan them, this is, oh, has that passed? I don't know what day it is, clearly. Ooh, y'all, the struggle is so real. But you can, that's still old, but it'll show you what it looks like on both spaces. So it's very good. So if you don't want to spend money right now, I would recommend starting with using this and also just understanding how you use, how you plan in general. Um, and one day in another world, if we ever find ourselves together again, I have so much content around just planning and just scheduling is wild. Um, but as you can see, there's a lot to this. And I just want to encourage all of you, if you are doing this mostly yourself and you're finding that you're having a hard time maintaining consistency, this is why it's a lot. It's a lot to try to maintain, which is why you should focus on what you can maintain. Don't try to run other people's race. Don't try to beat the algorithm. Focus on your audience, focus on your goals, do what you can realistically maintain and be consistent. That is the trick to social media minus all the rest of this. I think right? that was the last question from trivia for us. How do you do it all? How do you, when it's, when it's you just, you said it, it's, it's, you yeah. do what you can, right? And prioritize based on what we now know about these channels. Thanks to you, Jackie. Yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah. You all are always great. Um, social media has worked for me. So I do not spend as much time as it looks like all that stuff is scheduled. Um, so I try to stay off of it because I spend my, most of my day on it. Thank so, you. Thank you so much, Jackie. Thanks everyone. Bye.